Welcome back to Honest News. We're going to continue our series, I Will Build My Church. This is part two of that series. We left off in Jude. We left off in the book of Jude, and uh, verse 20. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost makes a difference how you pray. Are you listening? Praying in the Holy Ghost. That's not praying a prayer, the first things that come to your mind. It's not praying a prayer, what you want to pray. It's being led by the Spirit and praying what the Holy Ghost gives you to pray. Are you listening, people? I have found that when I'm praying in the Holy Ghost, that the Holy Spirit will give me Scripture. And as I'm praying the Scripture, it builds me up. It builds up my faith. But also there is that aspect of praying in tongues, building up your spirit. You don't know what you're saying in tongues. It's a language that's between your spirit and God. Remember, Paul the Apostle is the one that said, I knew of a man once, whether I was in my body or out of my body, I cannot tell how he was caught up to the third heaven, to paradise. Are you listening? Paul didn't understand it. Whether I was in my body or out of my body, he says, he says I'll glory in that man. He says, but I'm not going to glory in myself. He was talking about the spiritual man. Are you listening? Praying in the Holy Ghost, people. Your spirit, let me tell you this. Your spirit is far exceeding the natural man. You and I cannot grasp it. We don't understand it. But our spiritual man created in Christ Jesus, when we've been born of the Spirit, our spiritual man is far superior than the natural man. I hope you understand that. The intelligence is far superior. Because we are operating on a inter- eternal level of knowledge, wisdom, insight. Are you listening, people? Do you realize when you're in the spirit, you're operating at the speed of light? You ever thought about that? God is light. The people in the world and those that are in the flesh, they're operating in darkness. They're in the dark. But you and I that are in the Spirit, not just born again, but filled with the Spirit, walking in the Spirit, living in the Spirit, we're so far advanced in that condition, in that state, I should say, It makes me, it boggles my mind 
to think why in the world we would want to live below that. Why would you want to live in the beggarly elements, being in the carnal of the flesh, when you can live in such an accelerated, an excellent spirit? You can experience... a far superior life in Christ Jesus. Where you're not trying to live by hindsight, learning from your mistakes, but you can see afar off. Anybody listening? You can see afar off. Did you know that's what it means to pray in the Holy Ghost? That you have an advantage over the devil. You have an advantage. And you would think God's people would want that advantage instead of being duped by the devil all the time, being tricked by the devil. I'm going to tell you again, brothers and sisters, there's a place far superior beyond the natural man, beyond the carnal that very few of God's people have ever learned to live there. Amen. Oh, I feel his presence. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the new creation created in Christ Jesus. One new man. A new man. Father, we pray that you will take us further than we've ever been before, Lord, to understand the reality of what it is, Lord, to live in the Spirit. To understand what it is to have not the devil prevailing against us, but we are prevailing against him, overcoming him. We can see his devices. We, we see him afar off, Lord. We're not ignorant of the enemy's devices. We pray, Lord, that you will open our understanding. Help us to see, Lord. Help us to see what it is, Lord, that we're missing when we live in the flesh, when we live below, Lord, our privileges in you. If we could only grasp and understand, Lord, what it is to walk in the Spirit, to live in the Spirit, we pray that you will bless and anoint as we minister your word, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. You know, when the Scripture says that Jesus knew all things that would come upon him. When they came to arrest him that night, he knew about it. He knew what Judas was getting ready to do. None of it took him by surprise. And did you know we can live there, people? Amen. We can live in that place where we can know foreknowledge. We can know. We can live in such a place, a prophetic, that the scripture calls the testimony of Jesus Christ, the spirit of prophecy. We can live in the place of, with God in his foreknowledge. Are you listening? Where we don't live by hindsight, people. Now, you look at the writings of Peter, much of his writings, his letters, are hindsight. 
where he's telling us his experiences, where he missed it. You and I don't have to miss it, people. Are you listening? Do you realize there's a place in God of perfection? Jesus never was taken by surprise. Ever. Never taken by surprise. He knew. Do you know he knew he was going to meet the woman at the well before he met her there? Oh, yeah. That's why it says he must needs go through Samaria. Are you listening? If you think Jesus walked through his ministry blindly, hitting and missing, you would be so wrong. Jesus said, I only do what I see the Father doing. What's he talking about? Do you realize when Jesus got up in the morning and went to prayer, the Father revealed to him his whole day before it even happened. He showed him exactly the layout of everything that would happen before it happened. Jesus was walking in the know, people. Far advanced. He could hear the thoughts of men. I'm telling you, in the spirit, you and I can experience that. I have experienced that, where I could hear, literally hear the thoughts of people around me. Are you listening? Now, that's not something you can do on your own, operate on that on your own. That's through the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. There's a place so far beyond the finite mind, beyond the natural mind. Eye has not seen, ear has not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man what God has prepared for those who love him. Are you listening? Do we really understand what God is doing, people? You know, the world today is thinking aliens is the advanced intelligence, that they have intelligence that's beyond human intelligence. I'm, I'm here to tell you that there's a place in God of such wisdom. Could you be any wiser than to know before it happens. That's what the world is after today. They want to be able to know the future. They want to be able to predict the future. And that's a counterfeit. But brothers and sisters, in Christ Jesus, we can walk as Jesus walked when he was on this earth. I've experienced it to some degree. There's a place in God of such advancement, acceleration, attainment to where the devil can never trick you again. Are you listening to me? Where he cannot get an advantage on you. It's called walking with God. Enoch walked with God. He was not, for God took him. Are you listening? Turn with me, if you will, to the book of Exodus, chapter 28, verse 33. You know, when you speak the oracles of God, you're not premeditating what you're going to say before you say it. You become a branch in the vine. It's prophetic. It's the testimony of Jesus Christ, brothers and sisters. That's, that's how we minister here. The spirit of prophecy. 
I don't have a bunch of notes in front of me. The Holy Spirit has given me verses of Scripture and put them together, and I go from there. Are you listening? If any man speak, let him speak the oracles of God. The Scripture says to be instant in season and out of season. Amen. Beginning in verse 33. <clears throat> and beneath upon the hem of it, thou shalt make pomegranates of blue and of purple and of scarlet round about the hem thereof and bells of gold between them round about. A golden bell and a pomegranate. A golden bell and a pomegranate. Upon the hem of the robe round about. Now listen. Listen, people. This is a great revelation. If you want to understand what God gave us tongues for, listen to me. It shall be upon Aaron to minister. Listen. And his sound shall be heard. When he goeth in unto the holy place, before the Lord and how many know God's not finished Pentecost was only the beginning and when he cometh out that he die not <clears throat> the pomegranates were hollow when they were placed upon the hem of the high priest's robe around the hem. Are you listening, people? The bells that were made of gold as the high priest would minister in the holy place, there would be a sound the pomegranates and the golden bells would be ringing, making a noise, making a sound. And as long as he was alive and they're moving, there was a sound. Did you know that this is a type of speaking in tongues? Did you know that that little thing inside the bell is called a tongue? Are you listening? Now, we know there's a counterfeit today. But these golden bells were pure gold. They weren't made of brass, tickling cymbals and sounding brass. They were made of gold, pure gold, which speaks of the nature of God. Are you listening? In the, scripture, in, in the scripture, pomegranate speaks of resurrection. Are you understanding what's going on here, brothers and sisters? When Jesus Christ rose from the dead, did he not ascend and go to the Father? And when he went to the Father, did a sound come? Anybody remember a sound? Remember that sound? On the day of Pentecost, there came a sound of a rushing mighty wind. Jesus Christ had gone into the holy place. He didn't go up there just to do nothing. He was working. He was moving. Just like we see here, when the high priest Aaron would be moving in the holy place, there would be a sound. Do you know what happens 
when you're not praying in the Holy Ghost, when you're not praying in tongues, God's not working in your life. He's not moving in your spirit. He's not moving in the temple. Are you listening? When you're speaking in other tongues, it signifies that the high priest is working in the temple. Hmm. When's the last time you spoke in tongues? Now, I want you to understand, people, you don't speak in tongues when you, at will when you want to. It's out of worship. It's out of the overflow of the Holy Ghost. Out of your belly flows rivers of living water. Are you listening? Now, on the day of Pentecost, there was a sound. It says here in verse 35, his sound shall be heard when he goeth in and when he cometh out. That tells me there's got to be another outpouring of God's Spirit. There's got to be another Pentecost. There has to be. It says when he cometh out. Doesn't the scripture say in the book of Joel, in the last days, God would pour out his spirit? You say, well, Brother Joseph, that was fulfilled in the book of Acts. We see Peter saying that. No, 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 no. Look at it again. The Holy Ghost inspired Peter to say, God would pour out of his spirit. That's not what Joel said. You see, on the day of Pentecost, the earnest came the down payment. That's why it says when he goes in, there's a sound. While he's in the temple, there's a sound. You see? It's the former rain, the moderate rain, and the latter rain. You see? While the high priest is going into the temple, there's a sound. While he's in the temple, there's a sound. And when he comes out again, there's a sound. And when the high priest is coming out of the temple, it's a type of Jesus Christ returning. Are you listening? In the second coming of Christ. In the last days, God would pour out his spirit. I'm here to tell you, brothers and sisters, there's going to be a sound like never before when the high priest comes out of the temple. Praise the Lord. What a beautiful type that we see here in the book of Exodus concerning the high priest. So remember this. If you're not praying in the Holy Ghost, building yourself up, in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, if you're not speaking in other tongues, remember it signifies that the high priest is alive and working. How many know there's a lot of believers today, you'd never know Jesus was alive. They're just as dead. Amen. They got a form and a ritual, but they're not alive in Christ. They're not witnesses of his resurrection power. They don't live for Jesus. Amen. They've got religious, but they're they're not alive in Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to the Lamb. Mark chapter 16 and verse... 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Now listen. 
I don't know what the Baptists do at this verse of Scripture. And these signs shall follow them that believe. Are you listening? There's a condition, a requirement for these signs to follow. You have to believe. Well, if folks don't believe they're supposed to be speaking in other tongues, you think the signs are going to follow? These signs, that's why I say it signifies. Yeah, we're, we're dealing with Jesus building his church. I hope you understand that, people. He is the one working. Remember, I was sharing with you, there was no sound outside the temple. You could not hear man working outside the temple. It was silent inside the holy place. Amen. It's not a work man can do. These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils, and they shall speak with new tongues. They shall speak with new tongues. What do they do with that? What do they do with this verse? I want you to understand something. A lot of these Baptists today that say they're being filled with the Holy Ghost and they're speaking in other tongues, they're really buying into the latter rain movement. That's what they're doing. They're buying into the charismatic. Rod Parsley was having services where he said Baptists were being filled with the Holy Ghost. No, they weren't. That wasn't the Holy Ghost. That's not the Holy Spirit. Are you listening? <clears throat> Lester Summerall was Rod Parsley's pastor. And, and, and Summerall aligned himself with Kenneth Copeland, Oral Roberts, Kenneth Hagen. No real man of God is going to do that. I hope you understand that. I, I want you to understand, brothers and sisters, we're in the time, I was telling my wife the other day, that I looked up somebody in the charismatic movement, and around the very same time that Brother Joseph was sharing something, they were sharing the exact same thing. I mean, almost to the very letter. Same scriptures and everything. Same time frame. And I'm thinking to myself, isn't that interesting? They're not even twisting the scriptures. But let me tell you something. The source isn't right. It's not from sweet, a sweet fountain. Are you listening? It's coming from a bitter fountain. Bitter waters that kill. Are you listening, people? Our source can't be both bitter and sweet. It's one or the other. And you have this source today of bitter waters wisdom from below. They say all the same things and they use the Bible to hook you. Are you listening? They use the Bible to hook you. <clears throat> I was saying to my wife the other day, I said, I said, boy, I, and I didn't know Oral Roberts was already dead when I said this. I said, wouldn't it be something if God would get that man to repent and admit to everybody that he had been a fraud all those years? How many charismatics would turn to God, would repent? And no sooner did I say that, and the Holy Ghost brought the scripture to me, Though one rose from the dead, they wouldn't believe. I didn't even know Oral Roberts was dead. 
he'd have to rise from the dead and repent. But the Lord said, even if that happened, they wouldn't believe. Are you listening? You, are you listening to what I'm telling you? If they don't believe the law and the prophets, they're not going to believe the one rose from the dead, Jesus said. Did you know the law and the prophets spoke of Jesus? Jesus said, you search the scriptures and they testify of me. Don't miss that. I didn't say it. Jesus did. He said, they, the Old Testament scriptures, testify of me. He said, but you won't come to me that you might have life. But he said that, didn't he? They testify of me. The Old Testament testifies of Jesus. Oh, yeah. Praise the Lord. Glory to the Lamb. John chapter 14, verse 25. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. Listen. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. <clears throat> the Comforter, the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. He, not it, he. Get that, people. The Holy Ghost is a person, the third person of the Godhead. Are you listening? Not in any way inferior. These three are one. The Holy Ghost is just as much God as the Father and the Son and vice versa. When he, the Holy Ghost, is come, he shall teach you all things. Now I want you to understand something. Jesus never taught you and I to pray to the Holy Ghost. It's not in the Bible. So when you see people today like Benny Hinn saying, good morning, Holy Spirit, and all the focus is on the Holy Spirit, and they're praying to the Holy Spirit, that's not the Holy Spirit. You pray to the Father, Jesus said, in my name. Right? You're not even supposed to be praying to Jesus. Did you know that? You pray through Jesus. He's the door. He's... He's our advocate, but you don't pray to him. It doesn't stop at him. It goes to the Father. Jesus prayed to the Father. That's why most don't get their prayers answers today. It's because they don't understand God wants us to grow up. He wants us to know our Father. Are you listening, people? You think you're going to receive from God if you're not praying to the Father? I can't, I'm amazed how many of Christians still today are praying to Jesus when he told us to pray to the Father. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Right? Right? None of the persons of the Godhead are self-centered. Jesus always focuses on the Father. The Father always focuses on Jesus. The Holy Spirit always focuses on Jesus and the, and the Father. 
Always. There's no self-centeredness. Are you listening, people? And they never work apart. They always work together. My pastor used to say that the Godhead was like three businessmen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Those three angels that came to Abraham represented the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Did you know that? Oh, yeah. Praise the Lord. Remember God says, let's go down there. Right? Let's see if it's all together, the cry of it. He did go down there. That's right. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost went down there. Just as it says. Praise the Lord. Now that wasn't the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. I'm not telling you that. I'm saying they represent it. There's a difference. Just like we represent God on this earth. Right? Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Acts chapter 1, verse 4. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, you have heard of me. Heard of who? Jesus. Remember what Jesus said? When he has come, the spirit of truth has come. He will not speak of himself. He will bring to your remembrance. Get that. Understand that. Draw circles around it. The Holy Ghost is not saying something different than Jesus has already said. Peter learned that. Peter says, I'm going to remind you over and over again. I'm going to stir you up by, rem re by way of remembrance. We forget. God knows we're forgetful. And so when the Holy Ghost comes, he'll remind you. Bring to your remembrance what I've said to you already. Jesus, what he was saying, he is saying. Are you listening? And everything he said is going to come to pass, people. <clears throat> For John truly baptized with water. But you shall be baptized. Listen, Baptists. John did baptize with water. But you shall be baptized. With the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Now, there's those that are teaching today that's been done away. Where do they get it from? Where do they get it from? I'd like to know. The Lord makes it very clear. You need to be baptized in the Holy Ghost, people. It's not a matter of just being saved, born again, water baptized. You need the Holy Ghost. Are you listening? The high priest cannot work in the temple if you do not get filled with the Holy Ghost. He works through the Spirit. Are you listening? He works through the resurrection power, people. The divine power. The divine nature. That's how he works. That's how he worked through Jesus. The Holy Spirit worked through Jesus. The Father worked through the Holy Spirit through Jesus. And that's the way it's supposed to work with us. But so few today are filled with the Spirit. 
And it's amazing how many are being told they're filled with the Spirit when they get saved. My little brother said that to me. How do you know I didn't get baptized in the Holy Ghost when I got saved? Were you there? I know you're not filled with the Holy Ghost because your spirit doesn't bear witness with my spirit, even though you say you're saved. There's no life there. Are you listening, people? You can be saved on the merit of faith. Did you know that? Did you know that? All you got to do is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Yeah. But you got to do something to stay saved. Oh, yeah. You got to do something to say stay saved. You can't just... <clears throat> you cannot just believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, get saved, and do nothing. And the scripture says God gives the Holy Ghost to them that obey him. Does it not say that? Now, we're still dealing with the Lord said, I will build my church. This is how he builds it. It's through the Holy Ghost. It's through the being filled with the Spirit. Being filled with the Holy Ghost, people. And part of that is the signification, that sound of the bells and the pomegranates that high priest is working. Is he working in you? Is he? Is the Lord working in you? When's the last time you prayed in the Holy Ghost? When's the last time you prayed in the Spirit? Speaking in other tongues as the Spirit gives you utterance. When's the last time you heard the, the sound of the high priest working in the temple? <laughs> Hallelujah. When's the last time you heard the high priest working in his temple, your body? You are the temple of the Holy Ghost, people. That's what the Scripture says. <clears throat> Acts chapter 2, verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound Where'd that sound come from? From heaven. From heaven. Where was Jesus at the time that this sound came from? Heaven. He was in the holy place. The high priest was in the holy place. Are you listening? He was working. Didn't he say, I go away to prepare for you a place? He was working. He's been working, interceding for us. There came a sound from heaven of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire. And it sat upon each of them. Some of them were filled with the Holy Ghost. Is that what it says? Only a few. Only the apostles. Is that what it says? They were all filled with the Holy Ghost that were gathered in that upper room. And began. Notice it says began. God's not finished. He never said he was finished. They began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Do you understand, brothers and sisters, what I'm sharing with you today? This signified that the high priest was in the temple 
or in the holy place, the holy of holies in heaven, and that God was moving by his spirit. Amen. It doesn't say a few of them began to speak with other tongues. It says they all did. Amen. And even though they were speaking in other tongues and they didn't understand the tongue they were speaking in, God did something very supernatural. There were those dwelling at Jerusalem, Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Now, when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because they, every man heard them speak in his own language. That doesn't mean they were speaking in their language. It doesn't say they were speaking in their language. It said every man heard their own language. What does that mean? That means God translated what these men in the upper room were speaking in tongues, God translated it. Today they want to say tongues is you, you're actually speaking another language. It's not that you're speaking. My pastor was in a service in another country one time preaching. He wasn't speaking in their language, but they understood what he was saying without an interpreter. Are you listening? He had no interpreter. But the Holy Ghost made those people to understand what he was preaching. That is divine interpretation, people. Anybody listening? Now, today in the Charismatics, they want to say that you can speak in uh, another, another uh, language that you haven't learned. That's, that's not what happened on the day of Pentecost. They were not speaking in another language that they didn't learn as far as uh, the Medes or the what it says here, the different ones, the, the, the Medes, the Elamites, the people from Mesopotamia, uh, Judea and Cappadocia and, and Pochus and, and, and Asia. It wasn't they... they you understand what I'm saying? Do you think they were speaking in their languages? No. It says they heard in their own language. Why? Because God can speak to the whole earth in one voice. Are you listening, people? You see, what God was doing on the day of Pentecost was he, he was restoring the true unity from what he dispersed at Babylon. It says he confounded their languages at Babylon and changed their languages so they couldn't work together. God says what they have imagined to do, they, they won't be restrained. So he dispersed them. He confounded their languages. On the day of Pentecost, he was bringing them back together again for his purpose, for his work. Are you listening? You know, the whole earth today would like to be under one language so they could all work together. Well, how many know there is a, a language that they're all working in? It's called computer language. It's called AI. The whole earth is becoming of one language. Are you listening? That's a counterfeit. God can speak let me tell you, God can speak in one language and the whole earth can understand. Are you listening? God can use a preacher that speaks in English and everybody on the planet can understand it in their own language. Are you listening? That's the power of God, people. Not that they were speaking in everybody. You, you telling me that those up in the upper room were speaking all these different languages that we read here? No, they weren't. No, they weren't. 
The Bible says they were glorifying God. And as they were glorifying God, they heard in their own languages. Everybody could hear what they were saying. That's powerful, people. Oh, my Lord, that's powerful. Talking to you about speaking in tongues and the the purpose of it and what it signifies. It signifies that Jesus Christ is alive. It's about the resurrection. It's about the hope of the gospel, the good news, preaching the gospel, people. Are you listening? When it ever becomes anything more than that or less than that, it's not the gospel anymore. Remember, 3,000 souls came to Jesus on this day. It's about soul winning, isn't it? Glory to God. Acts chapter 19, verse 1. It came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples, he said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Listen to their response. They said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. They didn't even hear about it. They didn't even know about the Holy Ghost. And yet John the Baptist preached. There stands here one mightier than I. He will baptize you in the Holy Ghost. And these are followers of John the Baptist. Look how many today that still to this day do not understand or know about being filled with the Holy Ghost. You see, Satan does not want people to be filled with the Holy Ghost. He doesn't want them speaking in other tongues. He doesn't want them operating in the power of the Holy Ghost. Because it's not man working. It's God. Are you listening? He's working in the temple. He's working in the holy place. If we ever needed a move of God, you say, well, there's going to be a worldwide. No, there's not. We sing the song, God is moving by his spirit. Move, O Lord, in me. Move in me. God is moving by his spirit. Moving throughout all the earth. Signs and wonders when God moveth. Move, O God, in me. Let God move in you. And the result of that, there'll be the bells and the pomegranates. You will hear the sound. Are you listening? You'll hear the sound. Reminds me of the scripture in the Old Testament. God told David, when you hear the sound of the breeze in the mulberry trees. Huh? Praise the Lord. Do you hear the sound today? Amen. Do you hear the sound today? He said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. He said unto them, and I can relate to Paul. I can. I can relate to Paul in this verse in the way that he said this to them. I, I feel the same way. Unto what then were you baptized? (laughs) 
I have the same question today. What were you baptized? And they said, unto John's baptism. John told them to follow Jesus. It says after John died, it says, well, after he was murdered, it says that they went and followed Jesus. Are you listening? He said unto them, Then said Paul unto the... John verily baptized with baptism of repentance. Listen, Baptists. John verily baptized with baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. Listen. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Do you think they're being water baptized, folks? They were already water baptized. And when Paul had laid hands on them, the Holy Ghost came on them. When they heard this, they were baptized. He's, he's simply explaining to us how they were baptized. When Paul laid his hands on them, the Holy Ghost came upon them. They were baptized in the Holy Ghost. And they spake with tongues. And they prophesied. Water baptism didn't do that. Anybody listening? It's supernatural, people. And not like Sid Roth, supernatural. Oh, Lord. That's nothing but new age. <clears throat> Acts chapter 8, verse 10. And if Christ be in you, the body's dead because of sin. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. Now listen. Listen. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. See, that's the high priest working. Are you listening? You know, you go to the book of Revelation, you see the high priest working, don't you? I thought we were going to make this in three parts, but I think it's going to be four. I think, <clears throat> praise the Lord. Yeah, I think we'll we'll stop there because from this point on, we, we go into the diversities of the gifts and we deal with um, 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and four, ch- uh, chapter 14. And uh, I think this is a good place to, to quit for now. Praise the Lord. So if you want to, you can be studying or reading at least 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Until next time, God bless you.